Okay, so now we're going to make it. I'm going to do... Morning guys, it's MG doing the foil transfer kit video today. Um, okay, so let's get started. We're going to do a new project. <clears throat> just for the purposes today, I'm just going to do some text, um, show you guys how to choose some fonts, etc. So first, we'll go to the text box. We'll create some text. I'm just going to use the words family day for fun. And I'm going to do two of them. I will. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see, I've got two family days. <coughs> now when you're using the foil transfer kit, you want to choose typically a font that you can write with and doesn't turn into an outline. So this means that the font has to be quite thin. This one here will leave the font as is, but if I turn that, if I go to the operation and I choose foil and the medium thickness, you can see that the font turns into an outline. So it doesn't actually write it as if you were writing with a pen. Sometimes for your project, it might be okay, but other times it's generally not what people want. This second one, I will show you um, how to get a writing font. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. First, you can go to the font section in the Cricut. You can go to filters and you can choose writing. When you do that, Cricut will pull up all of its fonts that it considers um, good for writing. Unfortunately, their algorithm does not um, recognize thick fonts like this one as being bad for writing and maybe not our goal. So this thick one would turn into an outline. It wouldn't actually be handwritten. Something like flannel shirt here. This might be more appropriate for writing. You can see that it's quite thin. And if I go up here and I change it to the foil again, change it to medium, you can see that there's quite a big difference and that this one would be very appropriate for writing. If I go back into the fonts, I go to filters, I uncheck writing and I check my fonts. My fonts are all the fonts that your computer has installed and it will pull up all of those. For me, my preferred writing font is, I have two of them. The first one is called Always Here. That's this one. And it writes quite nicely, actually. Foil, medium. And it's quite thick. I like it. My other one, and this one has come my favorite, is called Christmas Wish. My computer isn't displaying the example properly, but if I select it, it's got a really pretty way of, it's just very elegant in my opinion. So I go back to operation, choose foil, choose medium, because for whatever reason, Cricut always undoes that. And you can see it comes up quite nicely. Now, if you don't have a lot of really thin fonts on your computer, there's two websites I recommend. The first website is going to be called show you. So the first website is defont.com. I use it for quite a bit. And you can go through here and you can look and just see which ones are quite thin. So this one, Sailing Cinta, would be quite thin, probably really good for it. Um, and you can kind of just go through, you can do script, I mean, look at the ones you want. And there's another one called 1001fonts.com. And I actually prefer this one. And the reason is because I can click on font categories, go to weight. Weight is how thick the line is. So I'm going to choose hairline, thin, light, regular, whatever my preference is. Now I know because I'm writing with the Cricut foil transfer kit, I'm going to want something very thin or probably hairline. 
So I'm going to select hairline. And from here, you can go through and you can pick out the font that looks good to you. That would be great for writing. <clears throat> Things that are thick like this one, again, are going to just be an outline. So look for something that is really, really, really thin. Um, something more like this one, the Lato Hairline Italic. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want. And all you do is you download it onto your machine and then you install it and off you go. Now, when you're going back into Cricut, if, or pardon me, if you go into Design Space, if Design Space is open while you have installed a font, the font will not show up. You have to close and reopen Design Space after you have installed the font for it to detect the new font. So just keep that in mind when you are installing fonts. For us, I've got my two words here and I'm just going to make them to show you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all the different um, weights or thicknesses of the foil transfer kit. Um, so I'll do them three times, um, but I'm only going to do them kind of one at a time just to show you the differences. And then we will go from there. So I've got these both. I know both operations are set to foil and medium. Medium is the tip that I'm going to start with. <coughs> if you'd like to use a different tip, such as a fine or a bold, by all means, set it. In reality, it doesn't actually matter what you've set it here. It's just going to reflect the thickness. As long as you've got the proper thickness tip, it will be fine. So I'm going to click make it and I'm going to align them on here so that I know that they will fit onto my paper properly. Now I forgot to size them to the size I want them. I want them to only be four and a half wide. make it. Now on here, I need to make sure I'm adjusting them to where my foil transfer sheet is going to be. You can edit it after the fact once you've got your foil transfer sheet on your piece of paper and that will make more sense in a little bit. I'll click continue. I'm going to turn on my maker. <laughs> So here, the base material is the material that you're going to be doing the foil transferring onto. You can use everything from photocopying paper, so printer paper, to your heavy cardstock. And I mean, I'm sure there's other options as well. You just browse your materials if you don't see it. For me, I'm just going to use light cardstock today. I use default pressure. I can see the instructions are here. So I'm going to move over to my machine. I'm going to load my foil transfer tool. I'm going to tape down my foil transfer sheets, and then I'm going to load it up and get it going. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to set up your project to use foil transfer sheets and the foil kit. You'll have a few options in your foil kit. You'll have the casing, which is important, and you'll have three of these tips. Each of these tips has lines on the bottom right here, these silver lines. This one has two indicating it's medium. You'll have another one that has one on it that's fine, and three is bold. For my purposes, I use the one with two. I put it in the casing like you would one of the little blades. And then this just goes in slot B on your machine if you have a maker, which is what I'm working with today. <clears throat> and then I'm going to show you how to set up so your So in my case for today, 
I have a foil transfer sheet sampler pack. My sampler pack has three different colors on it, rose gold, silver, and gold. Today I'm going to use the rose gold. I like the sampler packs because you get multiple colors and they're smaller. I tend to make a lot of cards with the foil, um, not necessarily a, a lot of big projects, but you can get them in much bigger sheets like 12 by 12 um, and so by all means, but this is kind of what I use and it works well for what I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it onto the piece of paper where I want to transfer it. You need to make sure it is shiny side up, color side up. I'm going to add a piece of tape to just the foil. I'm going to put it on my project. Now I know you want to kind of make it taut, but you also need to leave a tiny bit of movement because if you make it too tight, the foil might actually tear while it's doing its thing. And that's certainly not ideal. So again, I just add some tape to it and I will try to pull it and make it a little bit taut, but not overwhelmingly so. You want to tape down all four sides. That's important because you don't want it to catch. You don't want the tool to catch on it or for it to catch on anything else, really. There we go. And I try to use as thin an edge as I can for taping because if you take too much above the foil, it's really hard to get what you want done in your placement. So when the tape is over like this, you can, over your paper like this, you can either cut it. For me, I usually just fold it on the other side. And then it's good. And I'm gonna add one more small piece of tape to this tiny little corner over here. I wanna make sure it's not gonna catch on anything. Okay. And now I'm going to add it to my mat. I have my mat down here. I'm going to place it on here. I will use my brayer to attach my paper. Yes, you can go over the foil with your brayer. Just be careful because if your brayer has a lot of debris on it, you might tear or leave something on your foil. And of course you don't want that. And now I'm going to go back into design space and I'm going to just make sure that the placement of my words is within the taped area because the tape takes up a little bit of an edge. So I need to make sure that my letters are going to be within this space. So I'm just going to make those adjustments, fairly minor, in design space. Bring this back over here. And now you can see my project has been done. The foil has been used. So then I'm gonna take my paper off my mat. And I'm going to very gently peel off the masking tape. I highly suggest you use masking tape and only masking tape because it peels off your project really well. If you use any other kind of tape, it could rip the paper and wreck your project, which by the way is very frustrating. Take that hard lesson learned from myself. Tear off the rest of the paper later. But as you can see, it transferred actually quite beautifully onto there and it's quite done. So this is the difference 
between a font with an outline and an actual writing font. You can see there's quite a big difference. The line thickness here is the tip. So this line thickness is a medium tip for the font foil transfer kit. There we go. And it worked out quite beautifully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these same two things, but I'm going to do it here and here using the fine and the bold. So this one, I'm just going to use a marker. This is the medium tip. which has two little lines on it. And then I'll do the other two here and you can kind of see the difference in what it does and what it looks like. So to do that, take out my casing, take out my little tip here, the one with two lines, again, that's the medium. go to my kit, which is what yours may look like. I'm going to use the fine one next. And the fine one is just a single line, a single silver line right there. I'm going to put that into my casing and put my casing back into slot B on my maker. I'm going to reapply a transfer sheet. So you can see the difference is really hard to tell. This one is just a little bit thinner and this one was done using the fine tip. This one was the medium tip. So I'll write that there. The fine tip. Which has only one little line on it. And then last but not least, we'll do the same thing down here using the bold tip so you can see the differences. Again, you can see transferred quite nicely. Pull my table off. Keep my foil transfer sheet. The foil transfer sheet, unless you're super, super amazing, just goes in the trash, unless you can try to reuse it, but it doesn't usually work. You'd have to find the empty spaces to reuse it. my paper off and now you can see the bold so this is the bold transfer and it didn't even transfer nicely but that's the bold this is the fine and that's the medium so I'll just write that there you can see it's a little thicker and the bold tip again has three lines So now you can see the difference. Again, my personal favorite is the medium tip. It's kind of a good cross between being super fine and too thick. But again, it depends completely on your project and on the font. <clears throat> so there you have it. That is how you use your foil transfer kit. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will do my absolute best to answer them. Thanks for watching.